All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So first thing, we're gonna go ahead over to formative.com and log into your account so you can follow along. If you don't currently have an account, that's okay. You can go ahead and create a free account. If you'd rather just watch, that's fine too. When you go to log in, you can choose to log in with Google, Clever, Microsoft, or you can just enter your email and username. All right. So a little bit about me before we get started. My name is Katie and I am a client success manager with Formative. I am a former teacher. I have taught pre-K, kindergarten, special ed, and was an RTI specialist. I do have four dogs, so I apologize in advance if you hear them barking or jingling around. I am from Connecticut originally, but I've lived all over and am currently in Colorado. Some things to know for today's session. Our session is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our training center afterwards. Our webinar is scheduled for 30 minutes. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and enter them into the chat and we'll make sure they get answered. So in this 30 minute session, we'll be covering a lot of information. We'll start with our classes and students and how to add them and create your classes, how to create folders, how to create a formative, and then how to assign that formative. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my formative page. So going in and logging on under my dashboard. So when you log in, you will most likely see a page that looks similar to this. This is your dashboard. If you are logging in for the first time, you will probably see a page that looks more like this. If you are here, just go ahead and click that arrow, the little carrot, back to your main dashboard. Right. So this dashboard, this is your homepage. This is where you will find a little bit of everything. Over on the left side, you've got all your different formatives. And then up at the top are your different classes. Over here at the top left, you'll see your different tabs. Formatives, which is where we are now. Classes, tracker, and library. Let's go ahead and start with our classes tab. If you don't have any classes yet, that's okay. We're gonna go through and show you how to add and create your classes either manually or through syncing it with Google or Clever or Microsoft. Now, syncing those classes is probably the easiest way. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with Google Classroom just because that's what I have and I don't have a Clever or Microsoft account. So I go ahead, I click on that button. I choose which account to associate with. And it'll load it. It'll show me my class name and all my students. So I would go ahead and just hit the check mark next to whatever class and students I would like to add in and hit import. Now my class is already imported. imported. That's why it has the little gray check mark there. And then you'll see your class over on the side. To manually create a class, you go ahead and hit this plus new class button. And here you can name your class. So I'm going to name it webinar 11.2. You can choose a class color that'll show up in the little circle around it. Pick a color. You can pick either an icon, so a little image to go with it, or you can type in an abbreviation. You select your grades and your subjects. And then your organization is your school that you're associated with. And you go ahead and hit that create button. It brings up a little pop-up for adding your students. You have two options for adding your students. You can give your students this code and they can just join your class manually, or you can enter in their name, username and a password manually and add them that way. In this section, you can also copy and paste it from a spreadsheet that you have. Makes it super easy to add your students. Now, once you're also on your class tab, you have a lot of different options for what you can see. So if I look at my class here, I'll hit this little arrow down. I can see all my students. I can tell when they last logged in. I can click on my students. I can add them to different classes. I can remove them. 
I can view all their activity. So this is fun because I can see exactly what they have and haven't done. That's a great option for when a student says, well, I haven't seen that or I haven't logged in yet. You also have different options for your classes. The little button on the side, you can add students as they come in. If you click on that little square to the left of the class, you get a pop-up at the bottom where you can edit your class. You can add a co-teacher, you can clone a class, you can lock it, or if it's the end of the school year, you can hit archive. Now, for your Google Classrooms or Clever or Microsoft, when you have new students come in the middle of the year or leave in the middle of the year and you wanna resync that class, you go ahead and click that little button again and hit that resync button. And that'll just update it automatically so you don't have to go in and add a student manually or re-add your entire class. Makes life a lot easier. All right, so now I'm gonna give you guys a moment or so to go ahead and create your own class and add your students. I'll give you a minute or two to get that taken care of and then we'll move on. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go back to our main dashboard by clicking on that formatives button at the top. All right, now here we've got all our formatives down the side. Depending on how many formatives you have or how many classes you're shared with or how many collaborators you have, this could get really busy. My page, is super busy right now with a whole lot of information. Folders can help you organize that. You can sort them by classes, by subject, by day, however works best for you. So to go ahead and add a folder, you go ahead up to the top on this plus folder button. Click it and go ahead and add your folder name. So I'm gonna name it practice formats. And then I hit add. Once I've added my folder, I've got some options if I click the little circle to the left of it. I can rename it. I can share it. So if I wanted to add a collaborator to it where another teacher has access, I can move it. Or if I no longer want it, I can delete it. All right. I'll go ahead and give you a moment to create your own formative and your folder and name it whatever you would like. So now we'll get into the fun part of creating our formatives. So if we go ahead and click on our practice formatives folder or the folder that you just created, it'll bring you up another dashboard basically. This is just for that folder. If you go up to that top blue button that says plus new formative. And you'll see a screen with a box that says untitled formative and a number. This is where you can title your formative, right? So I'm going to title mine webinar 11.2. And you'll notice that this auto saves. So something happens and there's a fire drill and you're in the middle of creating something and you have to get up and leave the room. You don't have to worry about clicking save. It auto saves everything. If I hit this little carrot down here next to the, at the end of the title, I can add some instructions. This is a great feature for either adding instructions or your I can statements or directions, whatever you want to add in that goes with your title. Okay, so I'm going to add in some directions that simply say, please complete the formative and raise your hand when done. This little blue plus sign that's next to that gives you some options for your directions. You can do an audio. So if you hit audio, you can record yourself giving the directions. You can add an image, you could add a video, a file, all sorts of different things that you can add in to your directions feature. Okay, I'm gonna click the carrot up. Now I see this blue plus sign underneath my title. This is where we're gonna add all of our content. We have tons of different content options. So if I click on that blue plus sign, I have choose my content or question types. Red buttons are content, blue buttons are question types. So we're gonna start with an easy one. We're gonna do a multiple choice question first. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit my multiple choice question. And I'm going to add in my question. So I'm going to do which of these is an invertebrate? And then I'm going to type in my options. So I have snake, bird, starfish, dog. Now formative will auto grade for you as long as you indicate which answer is correct. So I'm going to click the bubble next to starfish that indicates that that is the correct answer. So when students go and do this formative on their own, it'll auto grade it. I don't have to go back and look at every single answer and see what they clicked and see if it's correct or not. All right. Now, another neat feature over here, which I like to use when I'm creating from this is up here, you've got this little eyeball. If you click on the eyeball, it'll show you how to preview as a student. So this gives you the student view of your formative. You can view it as if you were a student on a computer, a tablet, or a phone. And this little button over here will pop it out into another screen. So you can keep track of what it looks like for the student view while you're creating your formative and it does auto update. So as long as you add in a question, it'll update for the student view as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add another question type. This time I'm going to add a short answer question. And I'm gonna type in what month is it? And then I'm gonna add my correct answer, November. Now you'll see that there's a few options with your answer key. You can allow a par partial match. So if a student types in, it is November, that'll show as correct because it's got that word November in it. You can toggle on case sensitive. So for this question, since it is a proper noun, it's the name of a month, I do want to make sure that my students are typing it in correctly with a capital N. But if it was something simple where capitalization didn't matter, I could leave that toggled off. And again, since I added in the answer key, it will auto grade for me. And then I'm also going to add in another question type, I'm going to do a free response this time. All right. So over here, I'm going to do a math problem this time. And I want my students to solve for x. Now I'm going to use my blue plus sign over here to add in the math feature. It automatically brings up this crazy equation, but you can go ahead and change that. If you click on it, it brings up like a little math keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do x plus 13 equals 24. Right. And then I can add in my correct answer, which is x equals 11. All right. Now, since this is a free response question, students will have the options of how they want to respond. They can do text, they can do an audio response, a video response, they can use their math keyboard, however they would like to respond to this. I can also toggle on this one, show your work feature. Where for this, let's bring up their page. What they see is this page over here. So they can do the problem out themselves using the little pencil option. They can use the math keyboard however they would like to solve this problem. And then they type in their answer here. All right. So I'll give you guys a few moments to go ahead and create your own formative with at least two different questions. And if you have any questions for me while you're going in and adding in your formative and your questions, please go ahead and just pop them into the chat. All right, so now the final part of your formatives is you can go ahead and assign it. Up at the top, you've got that assign option. 
So if you click on that, you'll see your different classes. You can choose whatever class you would like to assign it to, just clicking the little check mark next to it. Then I recommend cl clicking on this optional settings button. Here, you can restrict it to individual students. If you only want certain kids to take this formative, you can select what students you want to take it. If you want them all to take the formative, you don't have to do anything with that. You can schedule open and close times. So maybe this is going to be some type of morning work where it's as they come in and you only want them to have from 8 a.m. to 8.15 to do it. So you can add your start times when it's open and your close times. That means they cannot begin it before or continue it after that. You can give them a time limit. If this is a test and you only want them to take 30 minutes, you can hit that 30 minute option. You can even add a custom option or no limit, you don't have to do anything. After submission, you have some options here where you can allow students to go back and edit. You can make it hidden. So once they hit submit, they can't see it anymore. You can keep it visible, but with no edit. So they can still see the formative and see the responses, but they cannot go back in and change anything. For returning scores, you can return scores instantly, where as soon as students click on their answer, they'll get their response. You can have it submitted after students submit their response. So when they submit their formative, it'll auto grade it and send them their score. You can do it when your formative is closed. So if this is something that they do during class time and someone finishes early, well, they're still not gonna get their responses until the entire formative is closed at the end of class. Or you have the option of not showing scores. So maybe this is a pre-assessment and you don't want them to know what they got because you're going to, you're trying to see what they know anyways. You cannot show scores. Lots of different options for that. Same with the correct answers. You can show them after the student submits, not show them at all, or show it when closed. You also have the option of displaying those questions in a random order. If it's something they're doing during class time and everyone's taking the same formative, but you don't want, you know, Johnny to look over and see what Susie's doing, you can have them do it in random order, so nobody's going to have the same order of the questions. Now, this will not change the order of your instruction. That instruction block will always stay at the top, right, with your title. All right. And then I'm going to show you briefly what some responses look like. So I'm going to go back to one of my formatives that I have with some responses on it. And I go ahead and hit this view responses tab. So if I hit totals, it'll show me all the students and it'll show me which ones they got correct and which ones they got wrong. I can sort this data by first name, last name, points, random, or submission date. If I'm showing this to the class, I can hide names. So students will be able to see all the responses, but not know whose response was whose. Lots of different options with viewing responses. All right. So it's a bit short for today because there's only two of you guys here. Um, if you are looking for some more resources, you can always, always, always view our training center where we have live and recorded webinars along with self-paced trainings. We also have options there for signing up for future webinars. To get there, there's a little question mark in the corner of your formative page. You just hit that button and it'll bring down all your different options. Our help center also contains lots of different articles and questions that have come in and everything you could possibly want to know. If there's ever something that you want added to formative, like, hey, this feature would be really cool if you had it, we have a feature request option. So if you want something added, go ahead there, see what other teachers have requested. You can upvote things. You can see what we have in progress that's coming soon, or you can add your own suggestion. 
If you still need help and you haven't found the answer in our help center, you can go ahead and contact formative support and we will have somebody by to answer questions. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this was a good overview of formative and I'll stay on for a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and pop them into the chat. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a great week. Thank you for joining me.